Okay. All right. I'm starting a new trend, okay? We've all seen these like yellow jackets. No, it's green. Green is the new color, okay? Green, not yellow. Come on, yellow? Because it stands out. You look like a banana. I mean, at least I look like I belong in the forest. Green, yellow bad, green good. There are a few things you expect to have to deal with when you live high in the mountains. Stunning views of the Rockies, wildlife everywhere, trees whose color change with the seasons, brooks, streams, creeks, and rivers, not to mention the alpine lakes with their stunning clear blue water, and of course fields of endless beautiful flowers. And when spring finally does make it to the high meadows and the hillsides look like something out of the sound of music, your soul reaps the rewards as you put up your arms, spin around, and see that the hills truly are alive. I wouldn't give this life up for anything. This all does come at a price though, and her name is Winter. It's not hard to get cabin fever when it snows nearly six months of the year. Temperatures can easily drop below minus 20, and that's the kind of cold where your nose hairs freeze. If you're not careful, frostbite can take hold quickly. Chopping wood all summer long and oh, taking care of the chores necessary to make it through winters like that somehow seem less of a burden than one might think especially when the first dusting of snow leaves a couple inches on the branches of the aspen forest just outside your front door. It helps if you like to snowshoe or ski, otherwise one can begin to feel a bit mm, isolated, especially in that sixth month. Sometimes the gray's just gotta go. So what do you do? Two words, road trip. We were heading to Moab, Utah, with stops along at a few specific locations gleaned from years of travel into this magical wonderland known to so many. We would have to travel through the Salt Lake Valley and a night at Meadow Hot Springs where clothing optional still seems to be the thing, so we'll pass on showing any of that and then on down to Capitol Reef National Park on our way to the Fremont River drainage. The highlight of it all was the only snow we saw was way up high on the mountain peaks and not what we left behind in our front yard. The first stop on this whirlwind tour would be to a location I had not been to since the early 80s. Can you envision a rock spire jutting up out of the desert surrounded by mm, an, an alcove of cliffs? where the springtime sunrise bounces off those cliff walls and lights up the entire alcove. 
because that was the goal. A long held memory of having seen that firsthand so many years ago had to be witnessed once more. Some folks would have you believe that the Black Spire doesn't have a name, but if you've ever done any climbing, then you know the real story. This little known rock had its first recorded ascent in the late 90s, a decade after my first visit, which was aptly named after a 70s porn star by the climbers who made that ascent. It's a sort of a rite of passage in the climbing world to be able to name the first summit of descent. I couldn't make this stuff up on my own even if I tried. It was a little sad to come back after so many years had passed, especially to see how much it had been loved to death by social media. On my scouting hike out to the spire, I found that I would not be alone for long as another couple made their way down the trail as well. I watched in horror as they scarred the area without regard for the new trail they just had to blaze to get the shot for the gram. <sighs> How do I know their shots were for social media? Well, they told me. And secondly, while he was scouring around looking for the right angle, she pulled out that dang bright yellow jacket from her teeny day pack. Yeah, I probably sound a little condescending. Too bad. Now, now you know why I rant about the ridiculous yellow jacket craze that's going around these days. Why can't the world just take a moment and enjoy a place without destroying it or trying to be the next influencer? Some things I will never understand. The hike out was extremely windy and dusty. Sand and grit got into everything, literally. I'm pretty sure more than a couple grains of that sand got into my sleeping bag that night as well. Early the next morning, with all the gear I thought I'd need, it was time to head back out to the Black Spire in the dark. This is the story of that morning. Wow, that's just amazing. Huh. I've been coming here for for eons. <laughs> I mean, not as long as the rock's been around, that's for sure. But this place is really spectacular. I'm waiting for the sun to come up. But we're starting to get a little bit of color. My hope is that that all kind of goes that early morning pinkish kind of thing. And I'm going to try and do a panoramic like from clear over here to back over here by setting it up in vertical mode and, you know, overlapping it plenty and then putting it back together later. That's the goal. With any luck, the cliffs here across the valley are going to light up and it's going to be amazing but one never knows so to get here you're going to have to find that out on your own it's kind of a hidden spot and it's already being trampled to death by social media and uh but if you do a little research you can you can find it but this place i'm telling you it's just like so quiet it's a couple mile hike in, it's not that far. And uh, yeah, it's really, honestly, it's not that hard to physically get to. But boy, it's amazing. It, it's really beautiful. You'll remember one of my favorite, I don't know, tools, if you will, is this uh, graduated neutral density filter which is really remarkable for scenes that are really dark and really bright. Right now, the light is just like so even. We have that bimodal distribution. I'll show you in the histogram later, but right now it's just like perfect, perfectly even light. I'm sure it's not gonna stay that way, but I think we can pull this off without having to put that filter on. The, I mean, it's a nice filter. It's, pretty spendy piece of glass, but 
it's still another piece of glass in front of a, you know, multi-thousand dollar lens. And I'm not really sure that that's something you want to do if you don't have to. Right now, I don't have to. Oh, I guess the other thing is I could take multiple frames, couldn't I? I could do one to, for the shadows and one for the highlights and then just kind of meld them together later. After all, the idea is to get back to what we saw. Okay, that's it. We're done. We can now... <laughs> we're not done. We're not even close to done because, well, yeah, we're just not done. Um, but we did get one in the books. Worst case scenario, we get no color and we can just, I mean, you know, come on, we can just turn it into like black and white. I know everybody's about the color. We need color. Like we're all colorblind and we have to just crank it up. We don't have to crank it up. We can convert it to black and white and we might actually have to do that. But we will wait and see. But there's a good chance it's going to turn into a black and white. That's the thing with photography, isn't it? You know, you get here early and you set up and you think you know exactly where you want to be. And then the next thing you know, the light changes and the contrast changes. And well, you know, that's what happens when the sun comes up. Things change. You can see more. And I'm not sure I, I like that spot. But the problem that I'm having is over the years so many people have come out here and visited i mean i started coming here in the early 80s back when it was just a climbers location and um yeah it's got a lot of footpaths and we couldn't see earlier now we can see them so it's like a question of can we hide it you know can we hide the the footprints the only way to do that that i can see is to like come down come down lower maybe I don't know I don't know it's a tough one oh yeah that's actually not bad that's not bad okay I think I'm going to come back right here just see what it looks like could be too far back. I don't know. But uh. Uh. So let's let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's do it. It is, after all, just pixels. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, this is interesting. You know, it's those little compositional things that you just don't see standing there, at least initially. Like, we have the big spire, we have the little spire. I call that the father and the son. And then... <laughs> way off in the cliffs i don't know if you can see it but there's that dark shadow in the cliff wall and the sun right the little spire the sun is a little too close in the composition so that means like from this angle i need to move over a little bit just so that that's not like perfectly lined up right because it's not about what's right in the image it's about what's wrong 
And yeah, I know, that's pretty nitpicky. Yeah, it's nitpicky. I get it. I'm a nitpicky kind of fella. Huh. I wonder if I could go this way. Uh, no, no, can't go that way. Look at all those footprints. Wow, that is, that is just so pretty, isn't it though? That's going to be okay. Copyright little rascals, by the way. I should probably put that in there. I don't want to get sued later. Otay. I doubt I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> you never know. Uh-oh. And I'm also seeing all my footprints. There's another tip, right? Don't walk out in front of your scene because guess what you do? You leave footprints. Where's a broom when you need it? Hmm. Okay, cool. Okay, so now we've done that, let's, let's do the smart thing and we're going to literally pick up and quickly move to another spot. We've got what I think is a really beautiful composition, but the sun is coming up, uh, about to come like completely up and over the little ridge line back here. And we can see that the sunlight is just starting to light the spire. So yeah, let's move. Do not fall with your fancy camera. That would be bad. Okay. Okay, so you can see my shadow on the thing. So <laughs> I'm going to literally, you can't really see the tripod, but watch this. so stupid. Did it go? I think it went. It went. I didn't hear it, but it went. I have no idea if that laying down thing worked at all. I guess we can we can kind of come look. We can kind of come look. Well, yeah, that did work. <laughs> I can't believe I cannot believe that actually worked. Well, I think that's it, boys and girls. We're done. Ah, okay. I think I probably have hat hair. I'm gu I'm guessing. Whoa, whoa. It's been a good morning. We didn't get the color we wanted, but that's okay. I mean, it's really beautiful here. It's calming, relaxing, silent. Oh my goodness, it's so quiet. Yeah, pretty nice. Well, I think it's time to head back to the trailhead and whip up some breakfast. Not sure what that'll be. Toast, maybe. I was silly enough to bring bread and hamburger and, uh, yeah, ridiculous kinds of camping food. But I brought it. So, well... We'll see what else we see. Maybe we see something else. I don't know. But until then, uh, see you on the trail.
Ugh. Gotta go get my bag so I can pack everything up. All right, so to wrap up on this little adventure out to the spire, I just want to take a moment and uh, share with you some of my thoughts and why I wanted to come back out here after so many years. Uh, I guess the one thing that never ceases to amaze me is how amazing Mother Nature really is. I mean, if you take a look at this thing, uh, it just pokes up out of the ground. It's, you know, as everything else is eroded around it. And it's just the coolest feature ever. And I don't know if you can see it, but up there on the top, there's those lines. And in the afternoon, uh, as the sun's behind it, they actually glow because they're, I don't know what they are, I'll find out later and let you know, but they're compressed something, almost like a quartz or a glass, and uh, the light comes through it, and it just, I don't know, it's just, it's just remarkable. It's so quiet and so peaceful, I mean, I hate to say it, but if we were on Tatooine, you kind of expect to, <laughs> kind of expect to see like a desert racer going through here. Yeah, I, I definitely love being out here. If you get a chance, come on out. Like I said, it's a little bit of a hike, but it's not too bad. And uh, as you can tell, it looks completely different from this angle. One thing I'd suggest doing is just explore. Remember those three rules? Explore, explore. What was that third one? Oh yeah, explore. Best view, I think, is what we were up there on top this morning. But uh, I don't know. There's just something so peaceful and calm and, like I said, relaxing. Mother Nature is pretty remarkable. But now it's time to hike out. Time to get going. <laughs>